first of all, I'm just so happy to see you. It's such an honor to have this chance to work together with you. I've admired the work for so long and the chance to um, display your paintings at the Timken feels like a great honor, not just for me, I think for all of San Diego, because I think we'll have this chance to um, have something to really look forward to. So I just know that I am really looking forward to this. I, I wrote down a few questions and I may try to share my screen with you because I, I pulled up one of your paintings that will be in the show and I thought maybe we could share that with the public. But um, I thought I'd first ask you where you came up with the title for the exhibition, Despejitas, which um, is not a term, even though I don't speak Spanish, um, it's not a term I recognized before. And so if you could talk a little bit about that and tell a little bit why you chose that, that would be interesting to me. Okay, Despejidas, uh, on woven in English, came from the story of Penelope. Right. Penelope was the wife of Odysseus, who is a hero from the Odyssey. Um, and she had to wait 20 years for her husband to come home. She, in her heart, knew he was alive. But many suitors tried to convince her to marry again one of them. So she used the trick uh, to give Odysseus more time to, to come home. And she promised that when she finished uh, weaving a um, mortuary shroud for Odysseus' father, she will marry one of them. But the trick was that she worked uh, during the day, weaving the shroud, and by night, she undid the work. And I like the, the, the concept because I painted 20 uh, different pieces talking about different women, historical, mythical, ones that I know myself, and try to unweave the story, history, and to weave again in my painting from a different point of view, this character. Yeah. That's all about the title of the, of the series. So that's such a lovely idea and I think it's such a good index of how you work as an artist to always be thinking in terms of multiple layers of meanings for these works and I guess I'm interested if when you visit the Timken, you're already thinking about those relationships between paintings, historical paintings, mythological paintings, and how your own work um, might respond to them. Do you have a favorite painting at the Timken that you think of? Well, I do have many, many, but when I went to the Timken looking for a relation with my paintings about forgotten women, and the ones that the Pinkton have in, in, in the collection, I found three very interesting paintings. And with this show, I want to, um, to make an homage to, to these women because they are unknown. They are, they are only known by a lady. So there's a lady receiving a letter by Gabriel Messi. Uh, we have a portrait of a lady by Nicolas Mess. And we have a lady dressed in a, in a green uh, dress by uh, Bartolomeo uh, Beneto. And I kept on reflecting that there are so many women uh, philosophers, artists, scientific uh, women that have been forgotten by history and then these times are little by little, uh, their stories are, are getting into life. Because many women are only known by the wife of, the sister of, the daughter of, and they don't have um, a personality, they don't have their own name. So that was my connection with these two paintings. 
from the painting. It's nice because a lot of your paintings of women have these very specific identities, right? And that you're very committed to telling stories of women, some of whom have historical reputations and others. I know there's a painting of your grandmother in this exhibition, which Thank is you. personally important, right? It's very funny. When I was a little girl, I dreamed that I was a boy. Hmm. Why? Of course, because men had every opportunity, they could go everywhere. Uh, I wasn't allowed to go to uh, sleep by uh, with a friend or whatever. I went to a nun uh, school, and women were only regarded as um, to, to be virtuous and to obey the, the husband because, of course, you had to be married. Hmm. And that's why I'm always uh, painting women and giving them their choice and their voice and uh, I don't know, it's to, to be seen by other people. Yeah. Well, you do that so well, Mariana. That's one of the things I love best about your works is you, you draw us into these stories and you leave us changed by them. Uh, one of the things I wanted you to talk about a little bit is your decision to work small. You know, I, I think I've known you now for, I think at least 15, 20 years maybe, and and the work has always been small. It's actually gotten a little bigger than when I first uh, encountered it. But um, why does that smallness appeal to you, especially when the issues that you're addressing through the work are, are really monumental issues? The story is very funny because when, when I started to be a professional artist, I was looking for my voice, uh, the, the, the technique I was going to use, the formats I, was, I, I wanted to paint on, and everybody told me, no, you have to paint uh, this, at, at least the, the easel format. Mm -hmm. And you have to use oil and whatever. So I started painting with oils and acrylics and watercolors and in bigger formats. But I know that I, ha I was born with a min miniaturist eye. And even though I was painting something bigger, everything was full of details and, and little microcosmos. So, uh, and of course, I have always painted strong uh, themes. Mm -hmm. then I, I began painting bigger uh, paintings. Everybody was afraid of them. Yeah. And, and people didn't stop and give, and, and give uh, themselves the opportunity to really enter the painting and look what it was saying. So, I, I, and there was other thing that I, in a painting, in a big painting, I, I lasted one year working on that. And I had so many ideas in my head that I needed a different way to, to paint all the things I wanted to paint. So one day, one of my peers uh, told me, you, you know, you should do something smaller and maybe try a different media. I recommend to you to try a tempera. And I said, well, can you teach me uh, extempera? And said, no, 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 no. I'm going to recommend to you the best teacher in the world. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm on it. And he gave me a book. Mm -hmm. And this teacher is a 15th century author named, is the, the Libro del Arte by Chenino Chenini. Oh, and wow. there I found every detail to learn how to paint with extempera. And extempera has been the solution for me because I can be so detailed and, it, and I can paint the smallest things I have always dreamed of. Hmm. And to my surprise, when the observers came and see my work, 
just because it was so detailed and so small, they allow themselves to, to be near the painting. And when their eyes were on the painting, I captured everything else. And their consciences began working and the feelings and the thoughts came because they were trapped. And that's why. <laughs> So nice. You really are a Renaissance woman when I think about you <laughs> adopting those techniques and that methodology. I have this illusion that I follow the path of the great masters. Of course, I am not that kind of, of I, I wish I, I could think like them, but with contemporary things. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be such a pleasure to have the work in a dialogue with the paintings outside of the temporary exhibition gallery. And we're hoping that you'll also be in residence for a period of time talking with the public. So I think people will learn so much from this project. I'm really excited. So thank you so much for agreeing to do it. And as soon as things settle down, we'll fix the dates and let everybody know. And it will be something truly to look forward to. Yes. I'm I'm wishing that this strange time will finish yeah. soon and that we all can be together to celebrate life. And art is the best way to celebrate it. Yeah. Well, your art will be something to celebrate. Thank you, Marinella. Thank you, Derek.